Hey, I'm Mindful. Today, we're going to take a look at granular synthesis. This is currently one of my favorite things to play with, and as an effort to better understand it myself, I've put together these examples to help explain how it works and what it's capable of. I will be using Arturia's Pigments as my granular plugin. However, these concepts apply to some modular hardware effects and many other software plugins as well, such as Quanta, Omnisphere, or DAW-specific plugins like Fruity Granulizer or Ableton's Granulator. Before we begin to talk about how it works, let me show you an example of how I may use it, and from there, I'll break down what's going on and talk about what granular synthesis is. This ambient pad is made up of a few layers, but they all essentially do the same thing. As I play this, pay attention to the window at the top left. You may notice a few things here. Firstly, that this is a sample-based form of synthesis, and operates very differently than synths using wavetables or generating sound through methods like additive, subtractive, or FM synthesis. Rather than using waveforms, it takes an audio sample and breaks it down into tiny grains. These are represented here as the white bars moving across this sample of a piano note. The other two main layers do the same process except I used samples of a violin and upright bass, and layered them all together to get the sound you heard. Being sample-based is a really neat and powerful tool because you can throw in anything from entire songs to individual notes or noises and get some very interesting results when scrubbing through the sample. Now as I said, grains are essentially tiny segments of the original sample, these can be manipulated in various ways, and be layered on top of each other in different densities, played at different speeds, volume, pitch, starting position, or even reversed, among other things. Through randomization of many of these parameters, it can result in some very rich yet unpredictable sounds. I think the best way to explain all this is to demonstrate by starting from scratch. Here I've recorded a C note from my guitar just to make this patch more playable later, and I'm running it through a few effects in Guitar Rig 5, which sounds like this. Opening up a fresh instance of pigments, I'll go to Engine 1, click the drop down, and select Sample. Then I will drag the guitar sample I recorded earlier into the window. This will be the sample we manipulate, and now I can play this sample across the keyboard. Right below the sample window is the granular settings. Let's turn this on and dive into what these parameters do. You'll notice that now when I play a note, it's repeating a small segment of the original sample many times. I can also scrub through the sample and get different tones. On the left side, I can change the frequency of the grains in an ordered fashion using the density knob. and randomize the grain dispersion here. I can change how often grains play forward or in reverse. And these last two knobs here allow me to adjust the pitch randomization as well as randomize the starting position for each grain. In the 
center, I can change the grain shape. There are several waveforms here, allowing for smooth or sharper tones. Here is how long each grain runs in milliseconds. And that can be randomized as well. There are also settings here to change the maximum number of grains that can be played simultaneously the stereo width, and randomize the volume of each grain. I have a couple more examples of neat things you can do with granular synthesis. Using a low overall density and higher random dispersion, I've created something that mimics random note sequencing you may hear in some modular hardware arrangements. You can take this a step further and create glitchy sounds and textures using a similar concept with starting position and direction randomization, and playing with other settings over a sample of an entire song. And of course, as you heard earlier, it makes wonderful pads and ambient textures using higher densities or more lengthy grains. Well, that's about all I've got for you. I can't possibly show you everything Granular is capable of, but hopefully you learned something through these examples, and I've inspired you to try it for yourself. If you would like to dive further into granular synthesis, I have left a couple links in the description to other videos that demonstrate and explain how it works. They take a bit of a different approach to how I have here, using modular hardware or creating more glitchy sounds. I would highly recommend checking those out if any of this sparked your interest. Until next time, stay safe and I'll catch you later.